How great is God, exalted in power, majestic above all. The heavens tell of his greatness. The skies display his awesome craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. In creating the heavens, God also created the earth and formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The God of love created man and woman in his own image to have a relationship with him. And so in the beginning they revered and honored God and lived in harmony with him. This continued until one day Satan tempted the woman to eat the forbidden fruit and she gave it to the man who also ate. In so doing, mankind rebelled against God and went their own way. As a result of this sin, mankind was separated from God and was thrown out of the Garden of Eden. But God still loved mankind. It was never his desire to be separate from those he created. Yet how could God be holy and the source of perfect justice if he did not judge mankind for their sin? In his holy book, God reveals his plan to save the world from his judgment. One of the first to see this plan unfold was Abraham. To test his obedience, God told Abraham to sacrifice his son as an offering to him. Abraham trusted God and sought to obey him. But as he raised his knife to kill his son, the angel of the Lord stopped him. He saw that Abraham feared God and was willing to obey him. Then Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket, and he sacrificed the ram instead of his son as an offering to God. And so God showed Abraham that a lamb or similar animal was to be slain as a temporary covering for sin until God would provide his ultimate sacrifice to pay for the sins of mankind. Instead of sin separating man from God, the sacrifice would restore their relationship. The Holy Scriptures speak of one who was to come and be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world as the ram took the place of Abraham's son, so this one who would come would take man's place so he could be forgiven. Some refer to this person as the Messiah, the one who would come and reconcile the world back to God once and for all. So who was the Messiah? In the first century, a prophet came called Jesus. Hey, what's happening? What's going on? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Oh. Jesus! Oh. Jesus! 
Son of David, have mercy on me. What do you want me to do for you? I want to see you again. And see. Your faith has made you well. I can see. I can see. I can see. In the Holy Scriptures, God declared the Messiah would come to be the Savior of the world. The life of Jesus gives evidence that He is indeed the one the prophets spoke about. Isaiah prophesied that the virgin will conceive a child and will give birth to a son. Centuries later, the birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Holy Scriptures declared that the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. This means that Jesus was to be called the Son of God in a spiritual, not a physical sense. We see this in how He lived His life. He healed people from disease, forgave their sins, turned them back to God, and promised them a place in God's eternal kingdom. He offered Himself as a sacrifice for sin in their place and then rose again, conquering death. Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness. But when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, he chose to go his own way and his actions separated him from the Creator. The Holy Scriptures declare that all have sinned and the payment for sin is death. This means a spiritual death, eternal separation from God. But just as God provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son, so He sent Jesus the Messiah to die in our place. His life, death and resurrection restored the relationship between God and all those who put their trust in Him. Now those who follow Jesus not only have their sins forgiven, but are saved from God's eternal judgment. They are assured of paradise and will live with Him forever. It is this life and freedom from the guilt and power of sin that Jesus offers each person today. This does not mean following a religion, but choosing to have faith in Jesus, who says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. This means turning to God and trusting Jesus to come into our lives, to forgive our sins and to make us what he wants us to be. It is not enough to intellectually agree with his claims, nor to have an emotional experience. We receive him by grace through faith as an act of the will. Jesus said about his followers, My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. In order to experience the abundant life which Jesus promised, his followers talk to God each day in prayer and read or listen to his word. They tell others about him and meet regularly with those who love and follow him. Remember his wonderful promise. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. <laughs>